If you want to have an impact on the healthcare industry, but you don't want to go to school until you're like 30 to become a doctor and go into all of that debt, then this video is for you. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes at hospitals to keep them running. You would be surprised at how many lesser known, yet still extremely important jobs there are in the healthcare field. I'm going to share two jobs I've had some experience with. I'm curious as to which one sounds cooler to you, so let me know down below. Hey everybody, my name is Hisham Khan and welcome to Income Over Outcome, where I give you college, career, and of course, personal finance tips. Now last week, a lot of you enjoyed my video where I talked about high paying healthcare jobs that don't require an MD. If you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out once this video ends, because this is basically a part two to that video, and I'll link it in the description. The first job is a quality improvement specialist. The government actually requires all hospitals to have some sort of quality improvement program. It's part of them being accredited. The quality improvement department has to report what we call patient safety events, which are things like a medicine being given to the wrong patient and them dying, or the wrong body part being operated on. And you would be surprised at how often these kind of mistakes happen. As a quality improvement specialist, you would be creating plans to make sure patient safety events don't happen again, but your job goes way beyond that. You're there to make sure a hospital is operating safely and effectively. So you would be working very closely with doctors, patients, and other hospital administration to solve problems. My senior year of college, I was actually able to intern in a hospital's quality improvement department, and it was actually a really cool job. QI is a real good balance between being involved with patients and working on the business side of healthcare. I worked on helping to build a safer surgery setup, which actually involved going to the operating room and washing entire procedures. I got to talk to patients and their families to see how their experiences could have been improved. I also worked really closely with doctors on projects that made it easier for them to take care of their patients. And of course, there were a bunch of business meetings where we had to explain everything we were finding. To go into quality improvement, you need to have a degree in healthcare administration, health information management, or some other sort of degree that teaches you about the business side of healthcare. You also need to get a CPHQ, which would certify you as a professional in healthcare quality, and some degrees might actually offer this as part of their program. Most jobs require some experience, but if you go to a school with a large academic medical center, then you can easily get an internship in their quality improvement department, exactly like I did. If you want tips on how to get internships, then watch this video here. It's also linked in the description. It'll be helpful for you to learn how to set up your resume and present yourself in interviews. Having a CPHQ and a few solid internships and quality improvement would be enough to get you a job post-grad. Starting out, your salary will probably be around 60,000, which is more than what doctors make in residency. As you get more experience, it'll go up to around 80 or 90,000. Higher up quality improvement positions, like directors, earn upwards of 120,000. The great thing is that a health management degree is so versatile, as you can probably tell by my videos. So if you ever choose to leave quality improvement, you can easily do that. As a quality improvement specialist, doctors might not like you all the time because you have to call out their mistakes. And trust me, doctors hate being called out. But at the end of the day, you're just keeping patients safe. The second field is health information management, or what we in healthcare just call him. A lot of my professors had this degree and worked in the field, so I'm very familiar with it. Back in the day, health information management was made to keep paper medical records safe. They were the people who made sure your records didn't get into the wrong hands and all the information was accurate. Now that sounds like a really boring job, but I would never turn you towards anything boring. Over the last decade, as paper medical records have become less common, the role of health information management has totally changed. The field is expected to grow by almost 20% in the next 10 years because healthcare data is only becoming more and more important. Modern day HIM is all about using data to drive healthcare decisions. One of the hospitals I worked with saw that their data showed there were a bunch of new patients visiting from from a zip code 30 minutes away. The hospital then decided to build a clinic in that zip code, which helped them because they got a whole bunch of new patients and it helped the patients because it made seeing a doctor more convenient. There are so many different types of jobs in the HIM field. You could work as a data analyst at a hospital, which means you would work with patient data to find trends that could improve costs, increase the quality of care, or enhance the patient experience. You could also be a hospital's cancer registrar, which means you would work with their cancer registrar to report and maintain it, 
and that's where the government gets all of its cancer stats from. Him doesn't box you into one career path. You don't have to work as a data analyst or even in a hospital. I know people in him working for government agencies like CMS, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, and even in healthcare consulting, like I do. A lot of you actually really enjoyed the healthcare consulting part of my first video and are now trying to go into it, which I think is really cool. But the whole point is that with a him degree, you can basically do anything on the business side of healthcare. To get into health information management, you're going to need a degree in health information management. As part of that degree, you're going to have to get a certification as a registered health information administrator or RHIA. You also need to make sure the school you're going to is actually accredited by AHIMA or the American Health Information Management Association. I have a link to accredited schools in the description below, so check that out if you want. The average salary for RHIA is around 80,000, but honestly, that range is really wide since it all depends on where you choose to work. That's all I have for you today. If you learned something from this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to leave any questions or comments you have down below and I'll be sure to answer them. I'll be posting a new video on Tuesday, so be sure to tune into that. But until then, take care.